folks, welcome back. Yes, Tim here, of course, Gamma Viti. Fun one today, checking out this drawer fridge from Iron Man 4x4. Few things on this product that I really like. There's a few things on this product that I really do not like. I promise not to hold back. Let's jump into it. couple basics to get started so really nicely done touchscreen here um, pretty sweet we'll get over some of the uh, functions in a second uh, it's got a light so I'll show you how that looks so yeah it's a fridge light um, it does not turn off if you close the door but it's got a little button to tell you that you left it on or not uh, and it holds some stuff so that's what some sodas look like in the back waters of course you put your groceries and so forth you can take out these dividers but you have full access to everything and i think that's probably one of the better benefits of this fridge by contrast a more traditional fridge is gonna maybe be on a slide or stay here but it's gonna need to open this way and a lot of times you're running into the roof um, or even if you can get it all the way out you can't get it all the way out to where you can pull the basket out and, and that's always been a barrier for example, like on a Dometic or maybe an ARB fridge where the lid's coming up this way or that way. In this case, I got full access to everything right down here. That is pretty sweet. And the other thing I love is that there is no fridge slide. There's really no need for one since the drawer slides out on its own. So uh, you don't have the height penalty of the slide and you don't have to hear that rattle. A lot of those slides, they rattle a little bit. Uh, so don't need it. All you need is the fridge right here. So let's jump into a couple limitations and we'll dive a little bit deeper into some other stuff. And I think the first thing I noticed that I was kind of bummed on was just the height of this drawer. Uh, you know, even a simple water bottle or, you know, my hot sauce. You know, I got my Franks here, of course, the Green Dragon. We love that stuff. Uh, I drink a lot of Nalgene bottles, right? So, you know, here's my Nalgene. I'm used to just setting these things upright and uh and let them go but it's not going to happen on this pretty much everything taller than a than a can is going to need to lay down so you got to be prepared for that um hopefully nothing leaks but in order for the drawer to be able to close you're gonna have to lay everything down the other thing you've probably noticed by now is there's no catch for that drawer so i'm on a little bit of a hill as soon as i let go that drawer closes but it doesn't quite latch so you know am i leaking a little bit of cold air there we go we'll tighten it up but i wish there was a stop on that of course i can put a stick or something in there uh, not the point there's going to be enough workarounds with this fridge already uh kind of wish that drawer would hold itself open the drawer does come out though so very similar to like a like a file cabinet it's like an there you go you can see the little little stick you kind of pull one up and you pull the other one down right and then out it comes but while we're looking in here kind of clever all the cooling is happening on the walls here so i just fired this up this wall on the right is the coldest and then it starts to ooze over the ceiling but eventually this whole box will be nice and cold so uh you know that's how it works and then the uh the drawer is really just a tray that that holds the stuff that you know likes to be in the cold box here now the basket comes out, that's kind of handy, especially for cleaning. Uh, and then here's your tray. Uh, this is not watertight. So there's cracks in the corners. You can see where it, it's just sheet metal and they've, they've kind of spot welded it around, but uh, this will absolutely leak water. You want to see that? So we'll just pretend my Nalgene leaked a little bit in the drawer. Uh, hopefully that's the nastiest thing that ever leaks in this drawer. Um, you can see that water coming out the corner though. So. Uh, I might want to seal this up, maybe some silicone around the perimeter, something that can take a low temp. Um, I'll have to research that, but no right out of the gate. Boy, if you have an explosion, something doesn't happen. Um, it's not only this, it's going to be messy, but it's going to be 
the fridge itself where that, that mess is gonna make itself into. Um, so a little bit of a cleanup. So in any case, yeah, these, these don't seal. Looking at the unit in back here, um, all the controls are kind of behind and, and that's probably a good thing. And there's ventilation on all sides. That's a very good thing. And it's probably best that I have this on top of some other drawers because this really needs to breathe. There's a lot of heat coming out of here. Uh, I had a trip where I had a, an air mattress, you know, rolled up and put it against this and it got really, really hot. Probably wasn't the best thing I could do for my fridge here, but you know, that is a concern. You gotta have these things well ventilated. Um, the power cord they give you is, is comical. Uh, it's a nice Anderson plug on the fridge side and then probably the worst of the worst cigarette lighter plugs on the other and it's like a foot long. I don't know where this is supposed to go or what it's supposed to reach, but it's almost garbage. So I made my own. I bought another Anderson connector and then I have this running right to a fuse block and that's important. Here's another look at that plug coming in and then my wire, that's a solar thing, ignore that going right to a fuse here. So I can pull this fuse if I want to, and you'll hear that fridge die. And uh, that's a very good feature because they really needed to provide some kind of a shutoff switch for this. Um, more to that in a second. Because the other thing I'll point out on this power is there is no 110 input. There's no way I can plug this into the wall or to an extension cord. It's 12 volts or nothing. So I either have to have a, a power bank to run this uh, before I head out, or I need to just have the truck supplying the power to it, uh, or I'm gonna make my own cord is really what I'm gonna do. Um, taking a, you know, more of a, a bank or a, you know, wall wart kind of thing, and then putting a plug on it with the Anderson connection so that I can actually have a 110. Um, website says it's gonna have 110. It doesn't have 110. Um, that's a big miss from Iron Man, sorry guys. So you can hear the fridge running and I've got my amp meter here where I can essentially measure the amp draw through these wires. I put it around that positive. It's 4.7-ish, you know, four and a half to five, um, which is pretty standard, maybe a little bit on the high end compared to some other fridges. And we're gonna look at that in a second here. Um, but just know um, when this is running, you know, you're gonna have a four, almost a five amp draw coming through there. Now here's the punch line. So I'm gonna push and hold the power button, turn this guy off. Couple seconds. There we go, it's off. Um, of course, I can still use the light, so I'm gonna turn the light off. Um, so this unit is totally shut off at this moment. Let's walk around to the back so, side. We're in back here, hopefully you can hear the fridge not running, sound of a fridge not running. I got my ammeter here. I put that around the positive thing and that says 0.83 to 0.85. Um, anywhere between 0.8 and 0.9 amps, almost a full amp of draw when this thing is not even running. So what's that mean? What's the consequence? Well, we're gonna get into that, but before we do, let's compare a couple other kind of known standards here. So I got a really, one of the, one of the cheap uh, ACO power fridges, um, one of those standby, and then the old standby Dometic, you know, CFX here. Um, let's see what the same numbers are on both of these guys real quick. And as I do that, let me just show you a hack. You can use your wire harness and figure out which side is positive and which side is minus on those terminals. Just take a Sharpie and, and write it down right there. Because what that does for you is it allows you to make your own wires just using these standard terminal ends here, um, which makes wiring these things very, very easy. So I've easy. got wires like this uh, in my trucks where on the on one side, I'll have terminal connectors for a uh, distribution panel, you know, fuse block, and on the other side, I'll just have the little terminal ends uh, that just go right to the fridge. So they work great; they slip right on. If you need them a little tighter, just give them a little squeeze with the pliers. Need them a little looser? Let's open it up with a screwdriver. Uh, they work really, really well. And of course, everything is fused, so if they were to touch uh, with plastic, it's hard to make them touch. But if they were, it's just a little pop, and I've got plenty of fuses. Uh, this is probably the most simple circuit I could have hooked up for a fridge. It's literally a battery with a foot and a half of wire, tiny little inline fuse here, hooked to the Dometic. So let me grab my ammeter real quick. So this fridge is not on and uh, got my ammeter, put it around the uh, positive line and 0 0.05, 0 0.08, 
uh, maybe 0.1 at a, at a top end, but for the most part, you know, it's, it's 0.1 or less here when it's turned off. Now compare that to the Ironman 4x4, which was doing eight times that amount of power draw turned off. So let's fire this thing up. So here we are on, if you can hear it running, but measuring about four and a half amps um, on this fridge when it's in operation, which makes a lot of sense because those guys say they're using the same compressor as these guys. Uh, it's that Dan Foss, so it, it makes a ton of sense. It's gonna have about the same amp draw when running. Um, the difference, of course, is when it's turned off. So let's compare that to the little ACO. Okay, so here we are plugged in, not turned on. And this guy is down at the eh, 0.2-ish range. So a little bit higher than the Dometic. Um, it's maybe got a little bit more going on in the circuit board here. But, uh, you know, half of the, uh, the other one behind me. Um, let's go ahead and turn this thing on and see what happens when, uh, when it fires up. In there we fact, go. So it kicked on. I spiked. It said 4.9. But now when it's running, it's saying 2.9. So actually a lower amp draw when running, but you know it had that spike that was actually higher than the other two. So a little bit interesting, different compressor here, um, but a little bit lower draw. Now you got a little comparison between the three and that was the point. So the fridge has three different battery protection settings that you can read about in the book basically H1, H2, and H3. You can see the table there on what that voltage cut off is. And to look at that, you press and set hold for three seconds. And right now it says H2, which tells me according to the book, at H2, it's supposed to cut out at 11.1 .1 voltage on my main battery, and then it'll cut back in once it hits 12.2. Um, I'm going to bump that to the H3, the more conservative setting. I want this to die at 11.6 because um, we're doing an experiment here and I want it to happen a little bit sooner. So I believe all I need to do is push and hold the set again, three seconds, and then I can go up. There we go, H3, and I think push set again. Well, that's full degrees Fahrenheit. There we go. So H3, we're good to go there, and uh, I'll just let that cycle through. And I might just verify it one more time. There we go, still says H3. So when that battery gets down to 11.6, uh, this fridge should shut off, right? So let's see what happens. So here we go. The ding means you have an E1 error. And if you look at the book, where to put the book? Of course the error codes are gonna be in the back. And that's gonna tell me my E1 means battery cutout activated. So, behaving exactly like it's supposed to. It doesn't chime forever, but maybe that wakes you up if you're sleeping with it. Um, and it'll still keep your stuff cold, right? If that happens in the middle of the night, it's probably still gonna be pretty cold in the morning. Probably be okay. Ah, uh, what happened to the amp draw? Here we are in that E1 state and turn this on and I'm still seeing a current draw on that positive wire, uh, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. So it's a cheap gauge, I know, but I think you get the point. So the programming works. You have battery protection that will stop the compressor from running when you hit a specified uh, voltage, but then you still have this parasitic amp draw, which we've measured up to eight times higher than other fridges. That's going to continue to deplete that battery, which means, yay, I stopped at 11.6. I could still start the truck now, but not tomorrow. That thing's going to be down even maybe below 11. Trust me, it's happened to me multiple times. Finally figured out what was going on, and it's that draw when the fridge is not even turned on that really gets you. And that's where I'm at here with this fridge from Iron Man 4x4. Uh, really cool. The drawer is kind of slick. I like being able to see all the thing and not having to dig so much for, you know, that one last beer or whatever I'm looking for. 
uh, the height of the drawer. I can work around. I hope something doesn't leak, but I really like to drink out of Nalgene. So, you know, I'm kind of concerned about that, especially with the drawer not even capturing a spill. That's sort of a downside, but really it's the power stuff. Uh, this cord is just silly. Uh, you get a ton of current loss with these things. So if you didn't know by now, know now that if you replace this with something like the Anderson plug, way, way, way better, or plugging this directly into a uh, auxiliary fuse panel that you've installed, way better than this cigarette. This is gonna jiggle free and uh, these little tips will even get hot as they start to lose their contact. So don't love this, but no 110. I mean, seriously, um, I'm gonna take one of these and make a pigtail so that I can plug you know, this end into that and be able to run this off of an extension cord because fridge number 101 or fridge 101, as we all know, is chill the thing down before you set out on your trip. Get all your drinks cold, get the fridge cold, and then this works so much better. But boy, if I have to spend day one just trying to get this down to temperature or worse, I mean, I guess I could put this car in the sun and let the solar panel try to augment the battery that's being depleted by this, but it just seems silly to park a car in the sun just so you can make the fridge colder. It's just not how things work. Fridges, I like to say you treat them like dogs. They like to be in the shade. They like when the windows are cracked. They like a little breeze. They love it like that. Solar panels, a little more like cats. They like to lay out on that hot sun and just bask in it. So uh, they kind of are counter. Anyway, rant on a uh, huge miss. Give me a 110 option for this thing so I can at least cool it down ahead of time. And then I'm dealing with a lot fewer of these E1 errors when I run low on battery voltage, especially that first day. And I think with that, I've said enough. So let me know your questions, your comments, and uh, what else you wanna see on these. I'm gonna keep running this and I may do a follow-up video with some more real life experience. I have taken it out a few times. I had a couple of events. I got a desert trip coming up in about four weeks. So I plan on using this extensively. Uh, we'll see what it looks like when it's all full of food and, and stuff and, and just how battery life has been. My advice is do not hook this to your only battery. Don't get stranded. This is a time bomb, especially if you leave it plugged in. So be able to pull a fuse, unplug it, um, or have it hooked to a secondary, secondary battery, excuse me, where you have a little bit more isolation there. Um, until then, yeah, thanks for watching, and uh, yeah, we'll see you on the next one.